Good afternoon to you all and assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm Shanaz Karim, Director of Inclusive Communities and Arts at the British Council in Bangladesh, and we are live with you from the British Council's Facebook page in Dhaka. So is the sound okay with everyone? Great. So, um, we're celebrating um, International Youth Day in Bangladesh this year through a month-long series of events and activities, highlighting youth engagement work across our program portfolio. As you may all know, youth is a key priority area for the British Council, not just in Bangladesh, but also globally. And as part of this celebration, I would like to welcome you all to this live panel discussion on youth engagement in global action. We will discuss the great work being done by the Bangladeshi youth, opportunities and challenges that they face, the roles of government, development partners, civil society organizations and media, and perhaps also do a reassessment of priorities, both inside Bangladesh and in the world in light of COVID-19. As you know, British Council has been working in Bangladesh over the last 70 years, and the overall objective for us as the UK's cultural engagement organization has been to create opportunities for young people to develop the skills and agency they need to make a positive difference in their lives and in their communities. Our flagship youth leadership program is Active Citizens, which aims to bring about sustainable social change within communities by establishing a global network of leaders. This program takes place in 77 countries and all these young active citizens around the world are locally engaged but globally connected. We have 45,000 active citizens in Bangladesh. Please allow me now to introduce our eminent panel members who have kindly joined us today for discussion on youth engagement in global action. We have with us today, Dr. Bodhul Alam Mojumdar, Global Vice President, The Hunger Project, and Country Director of The Hunger Project Bangladesh. We have with us, Mr. Zafar Subhan, Editor of Dhaka Tribune, and International Columnist of Great Repute. Ms. Rukhaya Alam Momita has also joined us. She's an active citizens alumnus and social activist. We have with us Mr. Javed Patel, Deputy British High Commissioner to Bangladesh. His expertise is predominantly in national security, but he also has a keen interest in youth engagement, public diplomacy, trade, and climate change. And from the government of Bangladesh, we have with us today Mr. Akhtaru Zaman Khan Kabir, Additional Secretary and Director General, Department of Youth De Development, Ministry of Youth and Sports. A very warm welcome to you all, and we really appreciate having you with us today to discuss opportunities and challenges for youth in global action. Um, for the audience, um, let me outline uh, today's program for you. Each panelist will initially speak on their respective areas. We will go back to them again for further comments and rejoinders, if any, and any messages they might have for the youth. There will also be opportunity for you, the audience, to ask them questions directly via the Facebook Live link. And we will have about uh, 10 minutes for the question and answer session. So I would now like to begin the panel discussion. And I would like to request each panelist to kindly keep the initial speech to five minutes, please. I would first like to go to Dr. Bodhilala Mojumdar. His organization, The Hunger Project, is the British Council's longest standing civil society partner in Bangladesh. We have been working together on the Active Citizens Program since 2009. Dr. Mojumdar, thank you for joining us today. Could you please tell us, based on your extensive experience of working with youth in Bangladesh and internationally, how the engagement of young people at the local and national levels are making a contribution at the global level? and what potential you see for making this engagement even more effective. Thank you.
Bodil Bhai, you're on mute. Okay. Uh, I want to thank you and your colleague for arranging this uh, this uh, special uh, session uh, to talk about our youth and their contribution, uh, to, um, which will make a better place for all of us uh, worldwide. Well, I look at. Uh, I want to uh, focus on this on a uh, from a wider perspective uh, and using a wider campus. What kind of world do we want? And uh, what kind of do we, what kind of world do we want for our youth? Obviously, we want a world which is a better place for all of us to live, a world which is without hunger and poverty, a world where everyone will have a meaningful life to live, and a world where everybody will live a life of dignity, and uh, and a world where we have a democratic system with human rights uh, respected, a peaceful world, a world where environment is respected. So that's the kind of world we want for us as well as for our young, younger generation. But will this future, will this kind of world fall as manna from heaven? No, it won't. It will have to be achieved. It will have to be earned. And, uh, and it will require leadership and leadership of millions of people. And that's where comes the youth. Uh, through the leadership of the youth, we will be able to create that kind of world. And uh, we adult basically messed up things. We fouled up our nest. We created a dangerous world, unfortunately. So youth will have to uh, clean up this mess. And, and that will require a new kind of leadership. And how leadership is created is leadership doesn't happen uh, just uh, out of nothing. It requires practice. It requires hard work. It requires taking action. So the youth who are taking action uh, and taking uh, the uh, social action projects, uh, undertaking social action projects and initiating little projects, little activities. And that's how leadership is developed, by undertaking social action projects, undertaking projects which, are, uh, which will improve the lives of the people around them. They gain confidence, and they gain the, they gain the uh, skills to undertake a bigger project, bigger action. And that's how leadership uh, is developed. And that's how they will be prepared for the kind of world we are envisioning for them as well as for us, and even uh, the generation next. And so we have a responsibility for preparing the youth for that kind of leadership. And we'll have to nurture them. We'll have to imbue them with a sense of social responsibility. That's what we have been trying to do through the social action projects, through, the, through our partnership with the British Council. And we'll have to invest in them. We'll have to give them uh, quality education. We'll have to make sure that uh, they have good health so that the, 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 democratic, uh, the demographic dividend that is created through, uh, through the large number of young people in a, in, a, in a nation like ours becomes a reality. And so through our, our investment, our commitment, our effort to prepare the youth, that kind of leadership will be created and we'll be able to usher in the uh, kind of future that they deserve to have and they must have. So this is, this is uh, what I see the contribution that we can make as well as the youth can make uh, through the actions they take locally as well as uh, internationally or nationally uh, action they take locally as well as nationally to create the kind of future, the kind of uh, the world we all deserve to have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. Bodhi Lalo Mojumdar, uh, for highlighting the wonderful work our uh, young people are doing and for um, identifying, um, you know, our um, responsibilities um, to prepare youth for this leadership. Um, the nurturing them and, and most importantly, investing in them and believing in them.
uh, which that's something, um, you know, the Hunger Project does so very well. Thank you. Um, I would next like to go to uh, Mr. Zafar Sohan. Uh, Zafar, thanks very much for joining us. And uh, my question to you is um, on the role of media in supporting and promoting youth resilience, um, the collective action they take, and their uh, nurturing uh, and investing in their creativity, especially in light um, of the recent shift in realities, priorities, and demands uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, thank you very much, Nazafa. I appreciate uh, your being invited to participate in this discussion. I think let's start with um, what we need to do is start with a recognition of what Bangladesh is, is a country, and how who we are is reflected in our institutions, in power structures. And what I mean by that is that Bangladesh is a country with a very large proportion of young people. In fact, the vast majority of Bangladeshis are under the age of 40 years old. It depends how you want to um, define youth, but if you could take Bangladeshis under the age of 20, Bangladeshis under the age of 30, Bangladeshis under the age of 40, however you would like to define it, it's certainly a large proportion of who we are. And then if you look at the institutions and power structures of Bangladesh, and you ask yourself, to what extent are young people represented? And I think we would have to admit that they are not represented very well. And we need to acknowledge and understand this discrepancy, this, and at the very fundamental <coughs> level under and anti-democratic to shut out the voices of young people <clears throat> in the discourse here we have in Bangladesh. And I think part of the problem is that, you know, for want of a better word, we have a very ageist culture here in Bangladesh, as in many other countries in the region and around the world, which make it very difficult for young people to get ahead into positions of power. And Missing this, I think, is a big um, drawback for the nation because really, um, on the one hand, imagine if we truly harness that power of young people in this country, what we could accomplish as a nation. Certainly we've accomplished a lot, but there's much uh, money being left on the table there. And again, it is a matter of fundamental fairness and fundamental representation, there's a lot of good work which needs to be done. Which now brings me to the media, which was uh, the specific focus of your question for me. What can we do in the media? I think what I have always tried to do in my media career here in Bangladesh, both as the op-ed editor of the Daily Star, which I did for almost a decade, and now as the editor of the Tribune, uh, a, a post which I've been uh, fortunate to hold also for almost a decade now, is that we have tried to give space in a platform to young voices, tried to create engagement around issues which are close to the heart of young people, jobs, opportunity, education, and really try and promote young voices. And again, I bring us back to the um, issue of the power structure. And I'm not just talking about government. I'm talking about the private sector. I'm talking about the NGO sector. I'm talking about the media itself. Look around and how many organizations and institutions in Bangladesh do you see which are truly empowering and have at the helm young men and women? The answer is very few. In other countries around the world, you have 28-year-olds who would be editors of newspapers. You have heads of state and government who are in their 30s or early 40s. So you have CEOs and MDs who are in their 20s of major, major corporations and companies. This is something we see very little of 
in Bangladesh. So what I feel our job is the media to do is first to identify this discrepancy and point out that this is a fundamental uh, problem we have in how we organize the affairs of this country, and really we're not using the potential, the full potential of the young people of this country. So our first job is to point out and identify the problem. And then the second job is to create space and platform for young people to be able to address these issues and really move forward. I agree 100% with what um, Badilalu Mojumdar said is that at the end of the day, the future belongs to the young people. Okay, it's their future far more than it is ours. And what we need to do is we need to empower them to take advantage of that future. But not only do we need to empower them, we need to, we have a responsibility to create those pathways, to create those opportunities, to actually create a culture um, which young people uh, which values the input in values the actual action in leadership of young people which is i think a, an area where we as a nation fall short and so certainly i think that is how i see my uh, responsibility is the editor of a newspaper it's how on a broader canvas, I see the responsibility of the media as a whole is to create um, this space and to promote these voices. Because I absolutely feel that for all that we have accomplished in the last 50 years as a nation, we can and must accomplish so much more. And we will be able to accomplish so much more if we just harness the potential of the younger generation, and you don't have to wait until you're in your 50s and 60s or 70s to make a difference in this country. So I think that's it for now. I'm happy to uh, uh, take this in uh, issue forward later on in the uh, discussion, answer any questions any of the other panelists or anyone in the audience might have. Thank you very much, Anas. Uh, thank you ve very much, Zafor. That's really very insightful. It's true that, you know, we talk about empowerment of youth, but we, uh, you know, we don't really put our money where, where our mouth is. So uh, we do, uh, and what you said about an ageist culture, it's, it's very true, especially for Bangladesh. And, you know, um, so this uh, recognizing the potential of the young generation and creating pathways for them it's very, very important. And I know that um, through your leadership, the Dhaka Tribune is playing a very effective role um, in that regard. So thanks again um, for your comments. So let us, um, uh, we also have with us today, uh, Rukhaya Alamomita. She's representing British Council's 45,000 active citizens in Bangladesh. Um, so Rukhaya, um, thank you for coming. So we would love to hear from you about your learning journey as an active citizen and as a youth representative. Could you please also tell us about the challenges faced by today's youth and tell us what skills and platforms you need during and beyond the COVID-19 pandemic? Thank you. Thank you very much. I am uh, very much honored to be here as a uh, representative of the all active citizens in Bangladesh. Uh, I hope I can represent them all in a very short time. Uh, my journey starts as an active citizen from 2016. Uh, so from 2016 till now, active citizen journey is a, like a new world for me, a, uh, a big window for me to see the world in a new vision, in a new uh, eyes. And I have seen that this is a very uh, big sector where I can, uh, I can improve myself and I also contribute myself as an active citizen to uh, others' goodwill. Uh, I'm from Jiangyang University, currently doing my master's in Department of Government Politics. And I am also performing there as a joint secretary, as an active citizen youth uh, from Jiang Hunger Youth and Hunger Bangladesh unit in Jiangyang University. Uh, 
active citizens are very dynamic and active citizens are very uh, active in their works uh, in this covid 19 situation it give us more opportunity to be dedicated towards our society towards our people who need us in this situation as a youth as a volunteer volunteer uh, at first i want to say that the challenges we have faced in this section uh, in this uh, covid 19 uh, time that we have faced that uh, lack of uh, we have seen that many of our youths are lack of in it knowledge uh, they are, uh, when they go back to their rural village, their homes, they are not able to access much in internet browsing or much have the uh, equipment so that they can be connected easily with others or with us and also the basic knowledge of leadership and uh, volunteer, volunteer programs and uh, co activities and uh, so that they need the basic technological knowledge, the trainings of leadership, the accessibility of internet and equipment, leadership capacity, the communicative skill and the skill development knowledge, skill development. So uh, after uh, seeing this, we, the active citizens, thought that what can we contribute here? What can we do to our these youths who are not uh, our of these skill developed or IT knowledges or just out of these advanced technologies? So we uh, want to them with us. That's why we try to give them encourages and we what we have given them uh, we started doing e-newsletters that the active citizens and other youths what they are doing good deeds to the society like giving foods to the people who are in COVID-19 or who are in lockdown area or who are in uh, poverty so we uh, distributed uh, food raw food and cooked food we distributed animal feed uh, masks centers the shops and also we uh, try to maintain awareness and also keep people aware about the uh, hand washing program or the awareness about the COVID-19 programs. And also we have raised uh, social uh, action projects like uh, informing doctors or connecting the COVID uh, positive people to connecting the doctors to have the easily accessibility of the uh, medicine or other necessary things they need or the emergency support. And also the other things we have done that uh, mental health like in this COVID-19 situation, all of our mental health is going way down and we all are in very bad in situations like now that we all are in lockdown. So we uh, work for mental health campaign, uh, we do online courses and after that we uh, done a program like uh, Artists for Change. Here people are uh, giving their views and giving their views about the gender-based violence or the violence. They are different kind of like the writing capacity. Someone is good at the writing capacity. So whoever is good at his any other of uh, good things that she or he can share in our page and we distribute it at. And from, uh, from April, we are sharing e-newsletters like 49 news letters we have still not published and here we are uh, doing that the good digs sh uh, should be spread out through all the country nationalized and also internationalized so the peoples are doing good they can be encouraged and to develop the uh, online uh, skill development we have started many online courses in skill development courses and we also run uh, online olympiad uh, we also start training, uh, giving training on COVID-19 awareness training and other skill developed trainings too. Uh, so people uh, keep creative and also uh, busy in this COVID-19 and have their capabilities, improving the capabilities. We also starting book review competition and all uh, around more than 10,000 people are engaged here in this book review competition and we are in this in third segment of this book review competition and this is very uh, productive and very helpful to the youths to prove themselves to be engaged in good deeds and to be healthy, healthy. and it also building the community connections to conversation with each other about the views of the books, about their uh, views of the books uh, and the societies, what the things about the writings and so other things also. We also uh, start uh, encouraging the entrepreneurs like who want to be entrepreneur or who want to contribute in this COVID-19 pandemic situations to as a helpful hand to their family. So uh, we have uh, many 
we have found many entrepreneurs in our active citizens. They are starting from their rural village, what they have in their home, they are made. Uh, so it's also promoting us that our cultural uh, things, uh, like uh, one youth from Mosin, Stilate, she, uh, he is starting her business, like uh, selling the tea bags. So it is very positive for us that youths are also uh, going to uh, these entrepreneurships and they also are uh, having a good for their family, like, uh, family helping hand as becoming as a helping hand to uh, become, uh, to help the youths to be a good public speaker or to be a communicative, a rational one. We have started debate programs. Huh. 64 teams around the whole world, uh, whole Bangladesh, sorry, uh, like uh, 64 teams around uh, 50, 50 active citizens and 30 seniors are involved directly here. And public speaking competition are also running. Uh, we are in our second phase of debate competition. So it is a very positive vibe for our youths to be active in this situation and to improve uh, the needs or the lacks that they have like in IT knowledge and other things. So we are helping the other youths to be connected to us. And many of them express us to run active citizen uh, training in online so they can be as also our part of active citizen. So it's a very good vibes that we active citizens are uh, very positively uh, encouraging the other youths to be performed as a uh, social head, to be performed as a well-being from the, for the society and for the uh, well-being of our country and others and these well-being and these good deeds also seen by the government and many local governments and administrations are also working us in the rural uh, areas to be helpful with them like uh, in from bangladesh one of our active citizens has also participated in the funeral program like uh, covid positive people who are positive who was covid positive and being dead, uh, and uh, we have seen that the funeral program was very tough last few months. So they are our active citizens willingly participated in the funeral programs and helped the family to uh, have them uh, a good funeral. That's it. I yeah. I want to say that we active citizens are dedicated ourselves for our well-being to our society globally and also locally. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rukaya, for speaking uh, very candidly. There's, uh, you're obviously very passionate about your work, and there's so much that you do. Um, and, it's, and it's true that, uh, you know, the Active Citizens Program really um, works as an eye-opener. It really allows young people to uh, view the world very differently, uh, changes their very outlook of life. And uh, we acknowledge that, you know, this. Uh, challenges that you've mentioned are, are very real, they exist. The, di the digital divide, um, uh, leadership skills, uh, trainings, comm skills, and of course, by in the inspiring stories uh, you're sharing, that's, that's very um, useful for um, other youth. And, um, uh, you know, uh, I can't tell you how emotional I get every time I hear such a young person speaking with such fire in their hearts. Thank you again, Rukaya. Um, I would next like to go to uh, Javid Patel, the very dynamic Deputy British High Commissioner to Bangladesh. Uh, Javid, it's a great honor to have you with us today. And I would like to ask you uh, to tell us about um, the UK government's uh, priorities and contribution to youth development globally and locally. In light of the skill sets you think are necessary for youth to succeed in today's interconnected world. Thanks. Thank you. And uh, firstly, thank you, Shanaz, and thank you to the British Council for pulling together what is a really important webinar and a really interesting discussion so far. Um, really great to have um, such uh, important insights from such a distinguished panel, and it's a real pleasure to be here. Um, you've already heard from panelists uh, about why uh, engaging youth matters now more than ever and about some of the challenges um, and it's, it's quite interesting that some of them are quite cultural and maybe during the question and answer session we can go into some of them with a bit more depth. Uh, I mean global challenges around climate change, uh, economic consequences of the pandemic uh, and of course a country that uh, in recent weeks has been uh, largely flooded 
um, mean that the stakes are much higher for future generations, uh, probably more than, than it's ever been. Um, so I want to talk just very briefly about some of the work the British High Commission uh, is doing to ensure that youth voices are heard, but more in terms of building uh, the capacity and the capability. Um, so, for example, on climate uh, this year to celebrate Commonwealth uh, Day, the British High Commission invited over 100 youth leaders, activists and entrepreneurs to promote their vision for the future, uh, tackling issues such as climate change, democratic development, economic empowerment and girls' education. Uh, and this engagement is crucial to deliver on climate action at COP26 and beyond, uh, but across broader agendas. Uh, we're also working with the Italian government, uh, who will host the pre-COP and youth event in September 2021 in Milan. Uh, this will bring together 400 youth activists from around the world to ensure their voices are heard ahead of COP26. Um, I was also delighted to see a really good friend of mine, Kenneth Flaherty, our COP26 regional ambassador, uh, speak at the launch of the Coastal Youth Action Hub, uh, which brought together uh, young activists from 19 coastal districts in Bangladesh on International Youth Day. Uh, more broadly than that, in education, uh, despite the uncertainty created by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, I was also delighted that UK universities have committed to continuing our flagship achievement programme uh, for 2020-21. Uh, this underlines the British government's commitment to investing in future generations with 1,700 scholarships awarded across 160 countries. Um, our Commonwealth scholarships uh, also offer 750 students the opportunity each year from low and middle income Commonwealth countries to complete a master's at a UK university. Uh, last year, 50 scholars uh, came from Bangladesh uh, who were awarded uh, under six primary themes, which ranged from science and technology for development to promoting global prosperity. But beyond these initiatives, we've also invested heavily in our inter international leadership programs. Um, and you know, earlier, one of the speakers spoke about um, sort of investing in and, and training and building building that capability. These programs are designed uh, to identify exceptionally talented young and future leaders who are addressing some of the most urgent issues facing their communities. Uh, programs such as our Queen's Young Leaders Initiative, uh, the South Asian Journalism Fellowship, and our International Leaders Program uh, have supported hundreds of young people with personal and professional development. Uh, and we hope that these will continue to, to invest in that capability, um, not just in Bangladesh, but across the world. Uh, but supporting young people isn't, however, just about activism. Uh, our international aid programs support young people from disadvantaged backgrounds uh, into education and, and employment um, in partnership with organisations such as USEP, uh, the Underprivileged Children's Educational Programs and BRAC. We provided vocational training for almost 50,000 young people uh, with further support across communities to promote education and employment, uh, including for young girls and young women. Uh, we're also proud, and we've heard already about the uh, Active uh, Citizens uh, program, but we're also proud to be associated with the British Council's work in this area, uh, particularly on global social leadership program, uh, which has, has already been mentioned, supported over 45,000 young people to develop their social leadership skills and social action projects in their communities. Um, and I also you know, want to pay tribute to the broader work that the British Council do. Uh, I know that the Active Citizens Programme is just one of several amazing initiatives uh, run by the Council to build the capacity and capability of young people in, in Bangladesh. Um, I'm, I'm conscious that um, you know, with, with such a short time, uh, it's difficult to speak in, in detail about these programmes. Um, but I hope that I've conveyed uh, the value, importance and commitment the British High Commission places on, on this agenda. Uh, you know, as we've heard already, continuing to invest in future leaders uh, is not just the right thing to do. It's a smart thing to do. Uh, we need to think about some of the, um, the sort of cultural barriers, uh, particularly which uh, Zafar mentioned earlier. Um, you know, how do we overcome uh, those societal challenges? to ensure that we're not just investing in the capability of our young people, but we're ensuring that capability translates into positions of influence, authority uh, and, and power, uh, because that's really where we will see change. So I'll stop there, but thank you very much for listening. And I look forward to some questions later on in the session. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Javed. Uh, it's true that, you know, you have to take a holistic approach, which the uh, UK government does so well in not just um, investing in future leaders, but also um, in, in the broader community, um, you know, investing in education and employment. 
and of course, um, you know, personal and professional development of uh, young leaders in Bangladesh is very important um, to the UK government's um, work in Bangladesh. And uh, British Council is very happy and very proud that we can work together on, um, you know, so many similar issues that are similar, um, close to our heart, including climate action. Um, so thanks again. Um, last but not the least, it's my great pleasure to welcome Mr. Akhtar Zaman Khan Kabir, Director General, Department of Youth Development, Ministry of Youth and Sports. Thank you so much for joining today's discussion, sir. Um, I would like to request you to uh, tell us about um, the government of Bangladesh's policy and programs that focus on youth and skills, and also um, future offers from uh, the Department of Youth Development to make our youth even more competitive globally as we approach um, 50 years of independence and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and assalamu alaikum. I heard very carefully and passionately, especially just uh, a lot of things are coming in my mind uh, from Mr. Badiul Alam. Uh, there's social uh, action projects already the Hunger Bangladesh uh, has done. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Jafar Sovan, I met him when I was just as a chairman of Bangladesh Porgiton Corporation in my office room. And a pretty long, uh, after a pretty long time, I just uh, have a chance to see him on the digital platform. And he already mentioned the a space, the creating a space for young voices uh, uh, in his uh, newspapers, and also the very young uh, active citizens, Rukaya Alam. She told a lot of things, a lot of program and action has done by the uh, citizen, active citizen. Especially, you know, the Department of Youth uh, Development, uh, we are basically uh, doing one, one thing is our priority, that is the training. We're creating training facilities all over the Bangladesh uh, and we have uh, 70 training institution the, all the uh, and the other places especially Dhaka we have two training institution and the focus on this training is to provide uh, unemployed underprivileged and uh, educated this is not really uneducated uh, the class five uh, who those have the grade five uh, we're uh, usually bring them on our training institution and some the uh, intermediate level the who the girls and boys uh, age between 15 16 to 35 18 to 35 uh, we we just uh, uh, treated them as a youth uh, according to our definition of youth in bangladesh and uh, our yearly target is 3.5 lakhs uh, have been trained from our different government uh, initiatives and many of them are now successful entrepreneurs. Uh, we're trying to focus, uh, we're trying to give the training, uh, especially three kinds of training. One is the create employment opportunities. Another is the self-employment. And the third one is the entrepreneurs, to create them entrepreneurs. And we provide them uh, some loans, very soft loans. Uh, it, is, it, it doesn't need any collateral. Uh, it is starting from uh, 60,000 to 1 lakh from it, and we have our partner, Bangladesh Karmo Shamsthan Bank. Uh, here is a provision. They will provide uh, 5 lakhs, 5 lakhs Bangladesh Taka loan uh, to the individual who those are trained from the Department of Youth uh, Development Training Institution and uh, other different uh, youth training institution. And uh, very recently, on the 12th August, we observed International Day with UN volunteers, uh, UNV Bangladesh, and also uh, the BRAC, uh, the Executive Director of BRAC, Tasif Saleh, and uh, Action Aid uh, Country Director, Ms. Farah Kovir was present uh, with this discussion, and our Honorable State Minister and Secretary was also presented. Uh, in that uh, session, uh, Actually, there's a lot of uh, demand, a lot of lot of uh, voices are were, were coming from the youth uh, segment. Uh, that is one is uh, to connect tablet to give them the proper environment 
engage the all the all the local and community level activities and another one is to engage them at a national level activities and also engage them the global level activities what we are just facing now is uh, we don't have a complete database we train a lot of uh, uh, youth in our different training institution almost 71 different trades the vocational and agro based training we have provided we just uh, give them this sort of training and most of the training is <clears throat> there is an office and you know the department of uh, youth development uh, uh, we have a very strong youth organization with us almost 22000 youth organization they are working with us and they also they have the tremendous activities already mentioned uh, here uh, Ms. Rukaya Alam, uh, this youth organization, they're also doing the different sort of activities like uh, in the COVID situation, they distributed hand sanitizer, PPE, uh, food, and medical support, and, and also the forestation program. And very recently, we just distributed one lakh sapling all over the Bangladesh uh, through this uh, youth organization. And um, the government uh, uh, and uh, our we also also just uh, gave we also just um, uh, we already just formulated youth policy you know the youth policy and also action plan of youth policy and already we are just uh, trying to finalize the youth index and we are uh, just uh, doing our all we, we have just completed all uh, our homework to prepare the final youth index uh, from the DOID. And also, uh, also just uh, we're trying to introduce the new uh, new training modalities module that is the agro tech. You know, this under this in, in during this COVID situation, we are uh, we have the lot of a uh, lot of lot of uh, requirement. We we just uh, got a lot of requests from the, our field level that uh, agro tech is very much needed. And that's why we introduce uh, our training program, Agrotech, Bioflox, uh, especially in the fishery sector. And also, uh, we are doing the, uh, we, 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 are, we, we are included the new training program that is the uh, leadership, leadership training program in our training uh, schedule and also training uh, model. And we have a uh, two type of special kind of training. That is the, we provided uh, IT training uh, in the mobile van uh, And we, we just, we give them the National Youth Award. It is given by the Honorable Prime Minister every year. And till now, 445 uh, youth has, have got this, those got this award also. And these are also just doing uh, the different kind of uh, sensitized program. They're doing the awareness program, uh, like uh, the child marriage uh, and dowry, anti-dowry and anti-smoking, anti-drug and a uh, uh, different type of social social issues and uh, i would like to request to all of our partners especially the renowned speakers panelists especially mr Badil alam uh, from the hunger project uh, from duid we are very much uh, encouraged to work with the hunger project especially the social action projects uh, our youth are ready uh, we we are, we are uh, uh, we, 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 are, we are ready to work with the hunger project, especially social action project, and also uh, the leadership program. And uh, you will be very happy to know that the, with the British Council, uh, already we have a, a MEU, that is British Council in youth, youth leadership program, and uh, DOD delivered uh, the youth leadership training among district level, where the participants found the training effective also. Uh, it is a 
done by the independent uh, auditor. And we, had, we have got a lot of positive feedbacks from this uh, field. So we are very much interested to uh, work with the British Council again. And uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's uh, the uh, program we are specially doing. And for our next, uh, the future plan is in this, under this COVID situation, we already finalized a project that is uh, to foster the unemployed uh, youth, especially the non who those lost their job uh, in uh, informal sectors. Uh, and our target is uh, 7 lakh 50,000 uh, youth trained during the next three years, next three years in different trade, especially on agro training, agro based training that is the focusing on fisheries, livestock, agriculture, and the new technology, especially bioflox in the fisheries and agrotech, uh, focusing on that. And apart from this, uh, we already just introduced an uh, online training program. Uh, in this uh, COVID situation, we already uh, uh, piloting online training program. We develop our content on online, the different trade. Uh, and also just uh, we're going to uh, open a new platform that is a digital uh, training system uh, it would be open for all youth uh, they can uh, just get uh, login and they will do the training on online and uh, also just to establish a public private partner link is uh, that is we call is the pikery cell.com here we bring all the products produced by the youth organization or the youth individuals and we bring the all the products on the digital marketplace and private sector one of the private experts, they are doing this technical support and we just uh, try to make it as a social business. And that will be the all the products used by the uh, youth uh, organizers. It will come to the consumer is affordable price and a very good quality. We're trying to ensure this. Uh, we are not doing business. We're supporting this initiative. And also we are trying to create a youth brand that this product will just have a brand name that will promise the standard and the other things also uh, that is all i just um, i think i must uh, stop now and uh, i'll be with you. and if there is any question uh, i'll be very thankful to uh, trying to answer all this thank you very much uh, thank you so much um director general um for telling us about the very inclusive approach uh, the government of bangladesh takes in um in uh, training building up capacity of our youth and so many different programs that um, you know I didn't know of. Um, so uh, I'm very interested, particularly in the youth index that you're doing, and also uh, you know this uh, branding of uh, youth products uh, for uh, for social business, and um, you know um, these agrotech uh, trainings, because um, in order to counter um, the uh, effects of uh, climate change, you know. For a country like Bangladesh, um, you know, our priority is always for looking for nature-based solutions. And that's, I think, um, uh, also a priority um, for the British uh, government in Bangladesh in um, working uh, in the area of climate action. So um, thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, so we've come to the end of round one and um, our eminent panelists have raised some really interesting points in today's discussion. And I'm really grateful for their uh, very thought provoking insights. Um, this year's Youth Day um, has occurred, you know, as the lives and aspirations of young people uh, continue to be upended by the COVID-19 pandemic. In Bangladesh, as in the rest of the world, there have been paradigm shifts in realities priorities and demands that affect the youth. So um, I would now like to uh, go back to our eminent panelists again in the same order as before and ask them for a brief message on how we can support the youth to contribute to the fullest of their greatest of their great potential. So maybe identify just one thing um, you can propose from your um, organizational or um, expert um, area. So we will give each panelist about two minutes. So Bodil Bhai, over to you first.
Udilpa, you're on mute. I can't still hear him. Uh, it got mute again. Okay. I think it's better now. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, uh, I want to thank uh, all panelists for uh, their excellent contributions. And I also uh, uh, assured the uh, Director General that uh, I'll call him and we'll, we work with uh, the uh, year directorate before and we want to uh, work in the future. And in fact, the, our present prime minister, the first public session, a workshop she attended was organized by the youth ministry, youth directorate and the hunger project in uh, 2009. Uh, for your information. So we go a long way. And the, the thing that uh, British Council can do is uh, do more of what it has been doing and uh, creating confidence in young people and giving them some useful skills and, uh, and uh, uh, have faith in them and create a sense of social responsibility. So in other words, on the one hand, uh, try to help them uh, reach their potential, uh, uh, their, the potential they have. And at the same time, uh, the, uh, create a sense of social responsibility in them so that they come to think that they, they will have to take everybody along to create a better life for themselves and for the society at large. So uh, in Bangla, we call it Nije uh, Bastle Bapir now. That's the kind of mentality that is, I'm, I'm the only one, so I'll have to take care of myself. That's the mentality, that's the kind of mindset we'll have to overcome. So we are for all, and all of us are in it together. And we'll all have to work together, we'll have to help each other, and we'll have to move forward. So sense of social responsibility, and this is, uh, we have been trying to do in partnership with, uh, with uh, British Council the, through the Active Citizens Program. And it has, it has created many, many leaders. We trained over 30,000 young people, and they are all powerhouses. And they are making differences in the, uh, in the areas that uh, they are engaged in. And uh, I think uh, we are very hopeful that uh, in the future, we'll mobilize them for taking on bigger responsibilities so that we can move this country forward. Uh, all, of, all of them, or all of us working together, and um, uh, we hope that British Council will continue uh, their support. And at the same time, we are looking forward to working with the, with the government, with the Ministry of uh, Youth and the Youth Directorate. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bodil Bhai. Um, you know, uh, we always have worked with the Hunger Project and we look forward to uh, working with you again for the next 10 years and more. Sure. Um, over to you now, Zafar, um, for your um, comments on how we can um, something, you know, concrete that can translate into concrete next steps uh, that we can do for the youth. Sure. I think um, in light of the current COVID crisis, one of the things which has been very apparent to me is the father of three children is how ultimately so much of the brunt of the shutdowns and the measures we've been forced to take to protect ourselves have really impacted and been um, faced disproportionately by young people. I've also recently, there's of course, the news has come out in terms of what's happening to uh, university entrants who wish to go to university in the UK, which of course is important for Bangladeshis because many Bangladeshis do look to uh, the UK for university. And with schools, uh, September's just around the corner, schools are about to reopen. It really underlines how the fundamental challenge, I think, and the fundamental difficulty is being faced here by young people. And what we then need to do in, when it comes to looking at how to resolve the current COVID crisis, and in fact, formulating any policy for the nation, I think we really need to put young people front and center. And I think that's always been the case. The current crisis we're in has, for me, underlined and emphasized the truth of this 
um, principle and how very important it is. All I can say is that uh, at the Dhaka Tribune, we will do everything we can to stand by the young people of Bangladesh. In this newspaper, you will have a platform, you will have a um, advocate, and I would like young people always to think, and this is not just in the Dhaka Tribune, but I feel elsewhere, that do raise your voice, okay? It's uh, perhaps it's difficult, perhaps you feel that our culture does not encourage it, maybe your upbringing and education has not encouraged this, but I would encourage all young people, and I'm, I'm encouraged to see that this is happening more and more, raise your voice, raise your hand, participate, be part of the process, because when you do that, you're helping not just yourself. It's not just good for the individual. It's not just good for the young person. It's not just good for youth as a whole. That is indispensable for the betterment of Bangladesh as a country and as a society. The more young people are empowered, the more they raise their voice, the better it is for all of us. Um, I really feel that that potential is there. And so the advice I give, um, to all young people here in Bangladesh is that this is your time. This is your time. Make yourself heard. Make some noise. Thank you. Thank you very much, Zafar. And thank you um, for your commitment to the youth um, via your um, newspaper to uh, stand, offer them the platform and advocate for their uh, empowerment. Thanks again. Um, so I'll turn now to uh, Rukaya. Rukaya, very briefly, if you can um, tell us about um, how you think, you know, the Active Citizens Network can uh, support the youth. You've already said some things about, um, you know, the inspiring work that you do. But any last final message for the youth from your side? My message from as an active citizen to other youths, uh, to be engaged with other co-curricular activities, leadership training programs, skill development programs to support yourself and support our nation locally and globally and uh, opt for the opportunity and be with the opportunities. And for DJSI, I want to mention that we are looking for opportunities. Uh, as much as opportunity you will give us, we will work on it when we are dedicated to be here for our nation, for this world. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Rukaya. It's people like you that make, you know, all these programs worthwhile. Thank you very, very much. Um, over to you now, Javed, um, for your um, uh, inspiring message for the youth about what, how you can help as uh, on behalf of the UK government. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll keep this uh, very brief and reinforce the messages that have already been given, which is, um, uh, you know, to encourage uh, young people to recognise that it's their future, um, to feel empowered, to engage in the in the debate. Uh, but I think the responsibility is also for all of us to to ensure that we do everything we can to give them a platform um, and to ensure they have a seat at the table at the highest levels. Uh, because actually, hearing uh, enabling sort of voices to be heard is one thing. But it's where those voices are, are heard. And um, I guess my, my single biggest message to young people across this country is uh, be entitled. Feel that the stakes are so high uh, that you should expect to have a seat at the table. You should be demanding to have a seat at the table. And you should um, you know, ensure that um, you know, just because you don't necessarily have the role models, um, you know, be the one who changes things. Um, because role models will inspire other role models. Uh, to come forward, and uh, uh, and that is the only way that you'll see a culture shift. And you know, again, um, you know, on behalf of the British High Commission, we are committed to supporting young people uh, in Bangladesh achieve that uh, that aspiration and ambition. And I very much hope that we see some of those shifts in in my time in this country. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Javed, um, for your um, support for the youth of Bangladesh. Um, uh, over to you, uh, Director General, sir, uh, your message, please, for our youth on how we can support them to contribute to the fullest of their great potential. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, just uh, there's a, a great chance for us. Uh, you know, I already mentioned on the 12th August, we observed International Day. Uh, 
during the discuss discussion already our honorable state minister uh, he promised to start uh, the all works uh, regarding the youth council we are uh, trying to forming youth council uh, to establish the youth council all the potential youth uh, they will uh, will put them on this council and they will raise their voice and they will be the part of the decision making especially uh, the youth related all sort of policies and uh, actions and, uh, and, and the program uh, from the government side. And also we're just uh, uh, doing, uh, establish the national database from the DOIT and it will be uh, uh, connected to the other, other ministry and agencies database and it, this database uh, and the, the finally the database will be handled by the BBS, Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics and it would be the, our national database and it is very much needed because uh, uh, different agencies and ministries, uh, we are doing almost the same thing, but we don't have the uh, accurate data. And that, that's why uh, sometimes it is overlapping and uh, we just uh, waste our resources and time and energy also. So that we are going to establish a national database. Uh, it is already uh, finalized. And also just uh, I would like to request, extend my request to my friend, uh, uh, Mr. Mm, uh, the editor of Dhaka Tribune uh, already just uh, he mentioned uh, he will create a space for the youth. Uh, so you are very much uh, we're eagerly waiting to uh, be the part of your, your uh, newspapers and also the media because uh, we have a lot of requested the youths. They're trying to uh, do something that they are they're trying to raise their voice, but there is a no platform, especially the very dedicated space for the youth. And uh, if we just recognize them, then we can retain them. Uh, to do the volunteer works and the, these very good works, especially the social issues and, uh, and the active, uh, they can can be the active citizen of Bangladesh. And also, I would like to request uh, Mr. Dr. Bodhiul Alam, uh, what he did uh, the, back in the 2009. There's a fantastic effort uh, the, from the Hunger Project uh, and uh, DOID. Uh, we organized a program, the national level program. So I'm uh, very much interested to do this program again uh, with the help of Dr. Bodhiul Alam. And of course, the other friends and also from British Council, I would like to extend my thanks and gratitude to them because uh, they are invited to uh, speak something in this very August, uh, uh, August uh, guest, uh, very distinguished uh, panelist. Uh, so from the British High Commission and from the British Council, uh, DOID is very much ready to do this sort of uh, work, especially where youth is focused and uh, trying to empower the youth. We're trying to raise their voice and we're trying to bring them to do the very uh, positive role to change this society. So I'm very, very glad and very happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Director General. Um, before I take questions from the audience, um, Bodhil Bhai has, um, he said he has one sentence to say. Please, Bodhil Bhai. Well, uh, during this pandemic, uh, well, Hunger Project has initiated what we call a uh, COVID resilient or coronavirus resilient village initiative. And we are doing this work in 1500 villages and the youth are playing the uh, biggest role there. They are, they are leading this uh, campaign at the community level. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to go uh, to the questions. Uh, there is a question for um, the Director General from Kamal Hussain. What are the activities that the government has taken for increasing the leadership in youth? This is for the Director General. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, already just I mentioned, uh, we have a, a 22,000 youth organization and also uh, so, uh, they are very much uh, uh, related to our work, especially they're enlisted. Uh, one, one, uh, some, some, some portion is registered uh, by the act and some are the registered. Uh, so time to time, uh, we have a very close linkage with them. We just uh, do a lot of a workshop and a seminar and a program, like uh, the social issues, some, some awareness program, uh, some workshop. So if anybody, any organization are interested to uh, do this sort of a workshop and seminar and symposium, uh, most welcome. Uh, we are, we are open. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question uh, for um, Zafar from Janus Khan. How can media play a role in creating awareness 
of online safety and privacy? Um, thank you for the question. I think, again, media has a great opportunity as well as a great responsibility because, you know, we really have the megaphone. We have the ability to say these things. In fact, on this particular issue, we published a commentary written by the executive editor of the Dhaka Tribune, Riaz Ahmed, which came out just today, where he talked about the privacy rights of ordinary citizens in Bangladesh. And not only that, you know, by our choice of stories, when we highlight the misdeeds, when we highlight um, uh, missteps taken at uh, the official level, that's how we can really um, keep the public attention. And of course, you know, uh, those who are in positions of power, those who are in positions to do something about it, they do read the newspaper. They are very cognizant of these debates where the public um, mindset is, and they will and they do actually take uh, notice of these things. So that's really the role we can play. And I think it's very important that we do play this role um, because at the end of the day, that is the function and responsibility of a media in, this, uh, in, in, in any country. And certainly in Bangladesh, this is a big issue as you have raised, and it's our job to point this out and in fact demand accountability and demand that action be taken. Thanks a lot, Zafar. Um, we've got some um, very interesting comments um, in the chat box. Um, Muntaha Alam says, uh, please address the main issues such as cost effectiveness so that youths of, from every walk of life can participate. That's very interesting. Um, Jagdish Joshi has said that um, uh, youth in South Asia need to go to several trial and error methods to build a nation um, because youth are not given a place to utilize their full potential. How can Bangladesh bring global youth to, bang to the country to help shape our country? And then we have another question, comment from Ashraful Islam that um, IT training is the most popular and demanding among youths, but we need to contact ICT incubators. And there's one question uh, for me uh, from Abu Nasser Muhammad Sufyan. What are the plans of the British Council to make our youth self-employed? Could you? So, um, so I'm just gonna um, take that question. And um, we do have um, in our um, youth leadership programs, we have a number of um, SDG focused um, trainings. Uh, and SDG 8, Decent Work and Economic Growth, is one of them. In addition, we do have a number of um, projects that work on uh, skills development of uh, young people in the country. So, um, so there are a number of plans um, for the, um, at the British Council that um, uh, on uh, making our youths uh, self-employed, including a very strong focus on women and girls. So um, I think um, that sort of brings us um, at the end of uh, today's session. Uh, thank you so much, panel members, for your um, uh, for your um, candid response to the questions. And um, so, from the discussion today, we understand that despite the numerous um, challenges, um, COVID nineteen is actually sort of like a grand reset. And it's providing um, opportunities to us um, as government, as development partner, as cultural engagement organization, as civil society partner, as media, um, and as youth leader to think about what is really needed and focus our approach on doing, um, on providing youth with the guidance to, uh, for them to go in the right direction. And many ideas have been raised today that we can um, discuss further and take forward together. And I'm very grateful for you, to you for raising um, these um, suggestions. Um, so I would just like to say um, that the youth of today, uh, they continue to amaze us by their resilience and resourcefulness. They make us so very proud by improving our societies and raising uh, global ambitions. 
and they give us hope for a better future as Bangladesh embarks on the next 50 years of independence. And the British Council will continue to work with all of you to develop connections and skills for young people and future leaders through innovative and adaptive approaches. We are very grateful to each and every one of the panel members for joining the event today and giving us so much of their time and sharing their thoughts with us. Thank you very much for coming and enriching the discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Thank you from DOD. Thank you, Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you from the British High Commission. Thank Thanks. you. Jafar, I'll yeah. call you. I'll, I, I, I have something to discuss with you. I'll call you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All of you. Okay. Thank you. Jafar, I have a number of you. I'll call you.